All right, everyone, I just got in a brand new Champion 3800 watt generator, and I've been wanting this for a long time. The price finally dropped. I used Honey to be notified of when there was a price drop, and it just came in. I've had my eye on this for about six months, and so I want to do an unboxing video for you. That's me. So I got my trusty Smith & Wesson tactical knife here. I'm gonna unbox it. This is actually gonna be a two part video. One will be this first part of me unboxing it and sort of firing it up the first time. And then the second video is probably going to be showing me using it in the capacity that I want, which is to provide power to an air conditioner for my cargo trailer, motorcycle hauler, travel trailer conversion. Um, and to recharge the batteries of my solar system if I'm in a situation where the sun goes away for several days on end I can merely fire up this generator recharge the battery bank and hopefully get a couple more days use out of it and since apologize for walking in front of the camera so much um, but since I will be using propane for my cooking and for several other things it makes sense to me to get a dual fuel generator this is all stuff that goes with it I presume let's open this up and see what is in it where did I put the knife um, it just made sense to me to get a dual fuel so I can use either gasoline or propane because I do plan on putting uh, at least two 20 pound propane tanks actually I got a, a 20 pounder and a 30 pounder um, some or all of those will go on my travel trailer which is actually an 18 foot cargo trailer being converted oh wow it's gonna be some work okay unboxing let me pick you guys up here in this box it looked like we have a little kit of stuff including the oil fill funnel handles screws wheels etc because this is about a 112 pound generator so that is the accessories that go with it. There is the top of my 3800 watt Champion dual fuel generator. Isn't she pretty? So because it's heavy, I think the best course of action might be just to cut open the box. I could attempt to just heave her on out of there. Although I've been working really hard and I'm getting older, my back is pretty sore because I helped my girlfriend lay the laminate flooring this weekend. And I put plywood up on the walls of my cargo trailer, which I'm soon going to show you. All right, let's just see if I can heave this thing out. Oh my God, I could, but that would kill my back. So let's instead just leave it where she is and cut this box open and hope I don't have to do a return for any reason. Big staples in this box. By the way, like I said, I was watching this generator online on Amazon. When I first started looking at dual fuel options, it was around 560 bucks, I believe. And I kind of put it on my wish list because I didn't have a need for it right away. Although the prepper in me wanted it in case the grid went down. Let's say we had a, what are they called? A coronal mass ejection or an EMP, something that inhibited electronics from functioning. I wanted to have a backup generator. Although, heck, this thing's probably got a circuit board in it too, so an EMP might take it out. But I just wanted to have another power source. There we go. Let's just cut open the box. And maybe I'll just pull it out that way and sit it on the deck. Oh, yeah. That's definitely got some heft. Okay, so here's the front side with all the controls. You've got a switch here for your gas versus propane on this side. Got a main power switch. You've got 30 amp out. You've got your 110, 120 volt out for typical house power. And that's the back side of it. Get it straight so you can see it. Looks nice, nice and clean. So I've got to mount the wheels and put the handle on it and read the owner's manual so i'll do that and then i'll come back and i will fit and i'll get some propane hooked up to it maybe put a little gas into it just a little bit and fire it up and continue the review 
Okay guys, welcome back to the next segment of this Champion 3800 watt dual fuel generator review. All right, so I've got it set up. I attach the wheels, I attach the battery terminals, I attach the LP gas, I attach the pull handle here, All right? And I've run it for about 15, 20 minutes. So I wanna do a little test, but I wanna explain my setup to you. Um, first of all, there's a five hour break in period on these. Um, and they say you're supposed to run it at about half load maximum for that five hours, but varying your power levels a little bit um, to help the stator uh, break in, whatever that means. So I've got a little setup here. I've got one of these um, power meters right here. This one happens to be a Baldor, Balder. Um, it's like a kilowatt type energy gauge. And I've got that plugged in. I tried plugging in directly here to these uh, 120 volt uh, outlets, but uh, the vibration made it too hard to read the screen. So I've got it connected into a power strip. I'm gonna plug the power strip into the uh, 120 household outlet there. And then I'll turn on this little fan over here on the right and um, we'll look at the readout on it. And then I will plug in this uh, higher hair air conditioning unit so we can see the wattage readout. And you'll hear the, uh, the draw for the air conditioner and for the fan too. Um, and this, I haven't run it off gas yet, just propane, but I wanted you to hear it. It's kind of a loud generator, a little louder than I was hoping, but you know, there's only so much you can do about that. It is on this wooden deck, which vibrates a little bit. So I'm hoping that, you know, being on the ground or on a rubber mat or something like that will quiet it down a little bit. I was thinking I could build a box around it to dampen the sound, but it says there's a sticker right here on the top. It says you need about a meter and a half of space all the way around, which is roughly five feet. So a box around it wouldn't work. It might still work on three sides, just not on the exhaust side. But I don't know. I'll just have to do like most campers do and put it out behind a tree or away in a, in a field and run along extension cord when I need to use it. If i am you know got other campers around and I don't want to disturb them. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, stop talking. I'm gonna run through the test. Maybe I'll add narration to the video afterwards, but the generator's so loud, you won't be able to hear me talk anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'll let the audio file run, I'll, but um, I'm gonna run these two devices. We're gonna look at the power reading and then I'm gonna kill the video and um, come back and uh, add some commentary about the unit overall, the ease of assembly, my overall first impressions of the generator. Okay, here we go. So first things first, we have to turn this. The gas is open because I've been running it. I turn this to close off the gas so now I've got to come back and turn this gas on. And it's got an electric start. That's one of the reasons I bought this is because, you know, in case the pull start doesn't work or I'm feeling fat and lazy, um, which is increasingly common these days, I can just go ahead and do the uh, electric ignition. So let's give that a shot with no load. You don't want any load on it whatsoever. When you start it up, you wait a moment and then bring your load on. So let's see what happens with the uh, electric ignition. Nothing because I don't have the battery on. So let's flip the battery on try again.
Okay, so that was very interesting. So you saw a little bit of a drain when I turned on a house fan and um, not very much change. Oh, a little bit of change cycling between low, medium, high on the fan. That's what I was doing initially. And then I switched over and turned on the air conditioner. You could definitely hear the generator when the load hit it, it you know slowed for a moment, but it handled that level of load no problem. I started the air conditioner on low and then I switched it to high and I expected to see a much bigger draw, but it actually stayed exactly the same. So that's, uh, that's very curious. Anyway, um, so pretty happy with the generator overall. Um, it's got circuit breakers right here. It's got an RV ready outlet for 30 amps right there. This is 120 volt right there for like a washer dryer, something like that perhaps. It's got the different uh, plug style, the three prong plug style. I call it European style, but it's probably not. Got two outlets right here, just uh, 120 volt, typical household there. I still haven't figured out the battery on off thing. Um, clearly the battery needs to be on to do the ignition. Um, but it does say that when this is in the off position, which I guess just means you won't possibly draw from the battery, um, it's still charging, the, the compressor is still charging this little battery down here. Now there are a couple of gotchas with this thing that I thought were interesting. Um, the wheels went on no problem. The battery is a little bit of a pain in the butt because you have to attach these terminals and it just uses a post and a nut, but it's very difficult to get to the nut on the back side. And it's very small and you got to get a tiny little wrench in there. And they could have made that, you know, like a captured nut on the back side or just some method to, to get your tool in there a little bit easier. Um, but of course you can take the battery out. It's got this little rubber strap. You just pop this down like that and the battery does come loose. Um, now I didn't realize that at the time before I pulled it out, um, but I should have done that. You also need to pull the battery to the side or out a little bit um, to get your oil fill cap, which is right here. One thing that's nice is they do include your initial um, quart or maybe half a, half a quart of uh, oil, of motor oil. I didn't realize that at the time, so I was hunting around for my own oil to put in there. And it turns out it comes with it. You just actually have to go through everything in the box, which apparently I didn't do right off the bat. It was kind of hidden inside some, uh, some cardboard. This is basically your selector switch between um, propane off or on. You just turn that to go back to on. And now that I'm off, theoretically, I should close this down as well. This is getting cold because it's been running for a while. That's cold, that regulator valve, and it's got some condensation on it, but no big deal. And then you flip that over to the side to get to your gasoline controls. And it's basically just a gas petcock right there. You got the on position, and then theoretically, if there were gas that goes in here, it would pull start right now or electric start as is. But I have not tried this out with any gasoline because I don't have any on hand. And I, uh, I guess I will get a small amount, maybe a quarter of a gallon, something like that, maybe a half a gallon, because um, I'm just going to run it for the break-in period. I don't really plan on using gas unless I really need to, um, and I don't want the gas to sit in the tank and start to gum up, and because I've read that gas can start to get old and gummy within about 30 days, and I don't want this just sitting with gas because I don't plan on using it for a while aside from just breaking it in. Um, I really got this to help start a full-size RV air conditioner, which that's going to be the next video. I'm going to show you um, how this guy, whether or not it works with the uh, RV air conditioner, which draws a fairly significant load. It's a 13,000 BTU Coleman uh, new quiet style air conditioner. And that's what I got this for and for emergencies. So anyway, first impressions on this guy are very favorable. I do like it. It's a little bit loud, but I got a feeling it's going to be highly reliable, which is always a good feature. I'm not sure why the battery's not going back in there. There we go. Simple removable strap. Probably be a good idea if one side of this were anchored, but no big deal. Easy enough to latch on the back side here. Um, that is really all I know to say about this. Um, one thing about pricing, the price on Amazon does go up and down considerably. When I first started looking these, at these, it was about 500, 550, 560 bucks. And then by the time a couple months later um, it came around, I thought about seriously actually making the purchase. It had gone up to closer to 650 or 670. And I've seen that it can actually spike up close to 690 bucks. But if you use a service like Honey, which will monitor for price drops and send you an email alert, which is what I did, 
um, you can get it cheaper. In fact, I know they sometimes come down as low as 490 bucks. Very rarely, and for only a select few people in certain parts of the country, but use the honey service if you're not using it. Set up an alert, and you should be able to get this for about 550, 560, 570. And I think that's a fair price. Uh, for me, this one hit the sweet spot between price, size, weight. The dual fuel requirement was a big one. Um, you can get slightly smaller, cheaper ones without wheels or the handle, without the uh, push start ignition and things like that. But those were all features that I wanted, um, even though it added a little bit to the weight. This thing's close to. Uh, 120 pounds or so whereas the other ones the slightly smaller ones are closer to 80 or 90 pounds so if you're older or not physically very strong you might want to consider getting a smaller one but this thing you know with the handle and the wheels it's kind of like its own dolly it's easy to move around it's only when you have to put it up in the bed of a pickup truck or bring it into maybe a, an rv or a camper that doesn't have a ramp then you would have a problem i plan on keeping it in the bed of my truck although i have not measured the height of it but i'm pretty sure this height um, accommodates most uh, pickup trucks and I've got a Ford F-150 sitting right over there and I'm pretty sure it will fit in the bed there. Hey guys I just wanted to do a quick follow-up commentary and add some more um, thoughts about the generator. So first thing I mentioned in the video about wanting to put the generator in my truck. I have a 2012 F-150 which is a very common um, truck best-selling truck in America and it's common size and with the wheels on the generator will not fit in the bed of the truck there are both wheels and then there's a little support base that you also bolt on um, which gives it it's kind of at the other end of the wheel so it's sitting level um, it won't fit in the truck bed with a closed top so if you have like a tonneau cover tono I don't even know how you say that but if you have a cover on your truck for security purposes and it's a Ford F-150 um, with the wheels on this will not fit but I did discover by measuring that when you take the wheels off you actually lose about two and a half maybe three inches in height and then it will fit in there so that's um, good to know also I mentioned the price drop thing by using honey that's very important um, right now um, in May of 2020, Amazon's got this generator at $685, uh, but just two weeks ago, the price quickly dropped to, I paid 548, I believe it was. So it's definitely worth waiting if and using a, a price alerting service to get it at a cheaper price. I also want to point out that there, if you plan to use propane, you get slightly less power out of this thing than if you're running gasoline. Okay, um, so if you are running um, just general load on gasoline, you are pulling a, um, you can pull about 31.7 amps, but that drops down to about 28 and a half. So you lose roughly three amps or 10% capacity if you're running off propane. So that's something to consider if you plan on running it on on propane like I do, but I still don't think that will be an issue. I also pointed out that it has a uh, 120 volt 30 amp RV port. Um, the other one that I pointed out, I wasn't sure exactly what it was. I knew it was 120 volt, but it's also a 30 amp circuit, um, but it's a locking plug. So that's what that is. And then of course it has the 220 volt household outlets. Um, and there's actually a surge protector built into that. So whatever appliances you have plugged in are protected by a power surge protector. This generator also comes with champion support. It's got a three-year warranty. It's a limited warranty like most, but three years is pretty good. And it's got free lifetime technical support. So I think that's pretty, uh, pretty cool as well. I will also point out that the uh, wheels are made out of rubber. It's kind of a weird combination of plastic and rubber but they don't feel like big wheel tires like on a kid's toy. They actually feel fairly substantial. So if you're going to have to, you know, wheel this generator over gravel or rock or grass at a, at a campsite, I think the wheels are going to stand up pretty darn well. I was pleasantly surprised by that. And with the handle, it makes it very easy to pull, but it is heavy. So again, about 120 pounds. Um, it holds 3.4 gallons of gasoline. And um, with that, that'll run about nine hours generally. And I'm sure that's dependent on how much of a load you're pulling, but generally the motor will run for about nine hours. And 23 feet away, it says it's at about 68 decibels. Um, I don't have a decibel meter though, um, so, I, so I wasn't able to test that.
I will also point out that, you know, this one is 120 pounds. If you drop down from 3,800 down to 3,400 watt and look at their um, next one down in their model line, you do drop down to 95 pounds. So if weight is a big concern and your power draw is not that big, then you might as well um, save a little money and you can drop down to the 3400 watt. Um, and the next one up goes from 119 pounds up to 162. And that's a big jump from the 3800 watt to 5500 watt. So that is a pretty, that's a pretty heavy unit. So I think this one hits the sweet spot as far as features, price, value, the amount of power, the runtime, the noise level. Oh, that one jumps up, by the way, too, from 68 decibels to 74, which may not sound like a big jump, but decibel scales are logarithmic, not linear. So that actually is a fairly substantial jump. And the smaller one drops from 68 down to 59 decibels. So um, that is fairly quiet. So smaller, lighter, quieter, but less power for the smaller 3400 watt. This one is a little heavier, a little louder, but I think worth it overall. And it's a little pricey in the $680 range, but if you can get a deal on it, I would say go for it. You can get them for around $550 if you're willing to wait. And I do see as of right now that there are there's a used one on Amazon right now for 406 and that is prime eligible. It says small cosmetic imperfections on the top. So that's probably a return. Oh, large cosmetic imperfections on the bottom. So that one is a used acceptable for 406 and there's actually several of those on Amazon right now. They've even got some used very good ones at 499. So you do have some pricing options. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, but whatever you get, make sure you read the owner's manual, make sure you break it in for a few hours, then change the oil, which I plan to do. But all in all, I think you, a person should easily get a decade of use out of this. And if you don't use it that often, but maintain it, you might even be able to get 20 years of use out of these champion generators. So I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you have any questions or comments, absolutely leave them below and I'll come back and check the comments and, and reply and you know do my best to, to help you out if you have any questions or concerns. So thanks for watching the video. I hope this was helpful and I'll talk to you soon.